Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate okay, Campbell, welcome to this special Money and Chill episode. Oh, it's always special, isn't it? It's always special when we've got mini pizza in the studio. How are you going? Always. I'm great. How are you guys? Good. you got Mojo on your shirt. Yeah. It used to be a magazine. I don't think it exists anymore like most magazines, but anyway. Right. I was, wasn't sure because I said the white stripes on there. Oh, yeah. The, so the white stripes were the front cover of the Mojo magazine in like 2003. Okay, That's right. very okay. specific knowledge. <laughs> yes, um, if, if you're in the music scene, you get it. Um, how are you guys going? Yep, good. good recovering good. from all of our events the other week. Yeah, recovering. Spent four days, four days on the road. Monique was at home. Yep, uh, catching up on all the edits. <laughs> recovering from her own, um, what was it, a cold or something while we were, yeah. on, while we were in Queensland, yep. enjoying all the sights. Just looking at all the sunshine while I'm just like splattering all over the place. <laughs> so it was good time, good time. Great visuals, Monique. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we went to the Gold Coast. I didn't know the event, shout out to Mel, was on a rooftop. So that was kind of cool, wasn't it? Uh, then we were in Brisbane for a, s- a bit of a sold out event at the pub. Probably uh, could have tripled that audience, 120 of us there. And then Townsville. Townsville was heaps of fun. Yeah. So good to meet so many people uh, on the road. So if you haven't already got your ticket to a road show, um, we're coming to Sydney. Got a couple of seats left for some uh, dinner in Wangaratta and in Port Macquarie. Uh, but the big one is in Sydney. We've got Newcastle, sorry. We've got Newcastle as well, but Port Macquarie, Wangaratta dinners, Newcastle's almost sold out. Sydney will be massive. Yes. Sorry, so. Sydney, 3rd of October. 3rd of After October. work. We'd love to see you there. Woo-hoo. After work, yes. And it's on a weeknight. Yeah, so we'll be the, we'll be there. All the rest team, Mel, um, we'll have Drew and Jamie from Model Partners, who people will know from the show. We'll have Queenie, um, Nick. And Hayden from Perla, um, you're interviewing uh, Jess, Jess Brady, Brady who Jer- I had on the podcast talking about superannuation a few months ago. Yep. Evan will be doing the halftime show uh, for anyone involved. Daniel and Jordan from our business podcast will be there. We'll also have a property segment with Chris, Pete and Amy all making the commute. Chris lives in Sydney, but that's okay. Uh, all making the commute to Sydney. Uh, we'll have Magellan, uh, team at Global X. It's going to be so many people. That's going to be cool. Yeah, so it's come be along. A lot of fun. So hopefully so cool. we see everyone there. Yeah, it's just after the long weekend in New South Wales, so um, we'd love to see you there, uh, well rested and ready for a good night of entertainment, a few drinks, lots of giveaways, etc. Special mention: something we're working on in the background. Um, it's most likely going to be live streamed, so you guys know this. Uh, that means that anyone who is anywhere in Australia or around the world can watch uh, and. It would be good to watch live. If you've attended a Rask Roadshow and you've asked a question, basically you go in the draw to win prizes. So we can't give out prizes in Sydney. It's a bit of a weird thing. Uh, unless there's some sort of what they call merit. So you have to have done something to earn the prize. And so when we give away the prizes live in Sydney, you could be anywhere in Australia. As long as you've asked a question at one of our events, whether you're in Perth, Adelaide, Townsville, whatever, you can tune in live and you may win a prize. And we'll contact you via email if you're yes. not at the Sydney event. Yes, exactly. So um, thousands of dollars in prizes, hence why we have to do it this way, um, because there's certain rules that trigger. But it's going to be an awesome night. Last year when we did the, the show in Melbourne, we sold out with 220 people, uh, too many for that small room. But then there was about 7,000 people watched it back. So um, if you want to, if you're keen... For a Tuesday night, three hours, get there in person or watch online October 3rd. So that's that. Anyway, Money and Chill Cape. Yeah. So if you're new to the Australian Finance Podcast, this is our monthly episode where 
Owen and I and Monique, our producer, we chat about what's happening with the RAS team at the moment, keep you up to date. If there's anything interesting happening in the world of money, Owen keeps us updated there. And we just share some of our money hacks that we've discovered and things that have worked for us recently and some of the uh, the books and podcasts that we've been enjoying. So it's not a super serious episode. We've got plenty in the back catalogue for that, but it's a bit of fun and just sort of us chatting about money like we do all the time because we're... We're nerds. Yes, well, Monique two of us are. But yeah. I break it up a bit. Yeah, Monique gives us some uh, Monique, balance of thought. Monique brings the cool. We just bring the, oh, yeah. the money. She saw G Flip this week. Oh, yeah. did you really? I saw her and took photos of her and I reviewed. I'm a writer too now, guys. Oh, wow. You wrote really well, I might add. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You read a review? Yep. Oh, no, I am. Um, because when we all did the, the investing challenge, like you all submitted your f- investment idea, Monique did like a full write-up. I was like, you could be an analyst on this. Oh, when I'm given a challenge, I go like full nerd and I take it seriously. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it was really good. So uh, Monique, Monique chose ETHI, by the way, the ETHI ETF, mm-hmm. the ethical ETF, um, just in case anyone wanted to reveal. Yep, yep. Um, so we all had to choose uh, an ETF or an investment idea. And um, yeah, it was a bit of fun. So good fun. So uh, yeah, we cover personal finance topics, but we also cover a bit of a... What's going on in the world of money? And what what is going on? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> tell me. Give well, me the lowdown. Okay, I've got a couple of minutes to in give less you. than five minutes because I'll get bored. Okay, so really, the thing that everyone is on everyone's mind is interest rates still because interest rates are high. Um, we've all got mortgages here, so we know that. Uh, that means that people can invest less because their interest rates go up unless they get a huge pay rise, which is unlikely if you're. Like it's unlikely that your pay rise would compensate for this steep increase in interest rates on a decent sized mortgage in Australia. Uh, so in the United States, we thought they were done with interest rate increases. In the United States, it's really important to know that a lot of people have 30 year fixed mortgages. So imagine if you got your mortgage like you two did or like I did just a few years ago for our properties. Imagine locking in the interest rate you got then for 30 years. Yeah, that definitely wasn't an option when I went for but my But you mortgage. probably would have, right? Oh, I mean, if it gives you 30 years of certainty, even though most people probably will change properties over 30 years. Most people probably would. But if you think about it, like my first interest rate was like 2%, like literally like 2%. Some people I had mean, it like- If you could lock in 2% for 30 years. You know Raymond that used to work with us? He locked in his interest rate at like 1.9% for five years. Oh my God, what? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't Talk about that like rate. genius, That's right? so good. But when you think about that, if you could have locked that in for 30 years, like people are doing in the United States, you would never- ever be worried about interest rate increases, basically. Mm. Mm. And so um, the problem that you have is, is that when that happens and interest rates go up, as they have done in the United States, you don't want to leave your property. Mm. So no matter what, you're going to stay in it. So you kind of become a prisoner in your own home. I hate to use that word, but that's what it kind of is. We've seen interest rates go up again in the United States, even though they thought inflation was falling. Uh, Here in Australia, people are thinking, well, maybe we, we might see something similar. But I tend to think that maybe interest rates are done going up because if you look around, people are pretty worried. Most people anyway, not so much the older generation that don't have debt. Um, Interest rates don't really affect them, of course. In fact, it's better for them. So you'll see them spending. You'll see the older generation who have money spending. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a term deposit or a high interest savings account Mm. with a decent chunk of money because you're retired and you have a large allocation to cash, you're doing pretty well right now. Yeah. And the stock market's gone up. So keep that in mind. And property has kind of, and recently gone up. So everything's gone up, even though interest rates have gone up, which is not normal. So what that means is the wealthy people have experienced like an increase in income and an increase in wealth, while the people who have mortgages are really struggling. So eventually that will hurt us. And you can see that now um, in confidence. So they do these things called confidence readings which uh, they go to like a thousand business owners or 5,000 people with a mortgage or whatever, just random people. And they ask them about their confidence and then they keep that going through time to see how it's changing. And the confidence amongst consumers, people who spend money and the confidence amongst business owners, which is what runs Australia, all of them have fallen drastically. So I've got, um, I remember on LinkedIn, I put this out the other day, but there was something from uh, Roy Morgan that showed that uh, the percentage of mortgage holders um, who are feeling stressed, like owner occupiers, has like risen dramatically. I think it's like the highest since maybe 2008, like during the GFC. So people are seriously stressed, um, which means that it would be scary, in my opinion, if interest rates kept going up. 
because it would just make matters worse. Yeah. Um, so what that means is for anyone, just to bring it back down, is um, I just don't think interest rates can go a lot higher. There's a famous last words. I'm not an economist. Like touch the table, touch wood. <laughs> oh, I don't think this is wood. But you know, I think this is some cheap plastic. But um, <laughs> but I just don't think that that can keep happening because we just can't afford it. So um, anyway, that's our interest rates are kind of flat. But the US went up. And what happened is the Australian dollar fell. So you've probably seen that if you try to book tickets, you're going to the yes. USA. Uh, things in the USA will co- become more expensive. Uh, and the reason that interest, when interest rates go up in the United States, but not in Australia, why does the currency move? Yeah, because money tends to flow to where the interest rate is highest. So if the interest rate is highest in the United States, you tend to see money go there because people want good interest, right? But like big institutions like Australian super will be like, oh, we'll put our money in the USA, we'll get a better return. Yeah. So that means that the currency, their currency becomes more valuable. Pretty simple, right? Mm. Um, so we've seen our currency become less valuable. And so that's why your overseas bookings are going to get more expensive. You better get now. in quick, Monique. Oh my God. I know. I've been but, trying to do some flights and it's like it's so expensive. <laughs> but here's the thing. I was just going to – and then I'll tie it off with this last thing, which is um, Qantas has been in the news a lot lately because it seems very clear – so seems very clear. <laughs> I'll just, inter- just insert the seems – that Qantas are hide, holding back on flights to increase prices. Um, and then, so this is a whole political thing if you've been keeping up with the news. Um, so supply and demand, what happens is less flights available, prices go up for existing mm-hmm. seats. Um, so Qantas, it seems very certainly mm-hmm. seems <laughs> that they're holding back on flights to push the prices up. But then the government kind of protects Qantas by not allowing international competitors to come into Australia. So consumers end up paying more. Mm. And by the way, if if Qantas owes you money from uh, COVID, go and contact them right now. They have fi- uh, $500 million owing to travelers that they haven't paid back. Oh, my God. Um, they're not certain on the price, on the, on, on the value. They, they, they keep saying they're not certain how much money they owe because they don't want to tell anyone. <laughs> but I estimate it would be around about $500 million. Mm, it's interesting. Depends what you booked because I had mm. some tickets and I have a, a Jetstar voucher mm. and they told me when I contacted them the other day that because of the type of ticket it was that turned into a voucher, I couldn't get it refunded for cash. Yeah, so they'll oh. say that you can get a credit. Yeah. Like a travel bank if you're in Virgin. Because it was going to expire later yeah. this year. But then they said, but if you can't book something by that date when it expires, let us know and we'll extend the date. Okay. Yeah, and then you get a sometimes you get a $99 Booking fee. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people that have like $50 credit or $100 credit um, get done over. But yeah, it's a bit of a dodgy thing if you ask me. Yeah. But it's like all those um, cards. When you give people gift cards, mm. they'll often spend $95. There'll be $5 mm. left on the card. They don't want to buy a whole new item because then they'd have to outlay 50 of their own dollars. And so the gift card kind of gets forgotten or thrown out and this brand just gets five bucks for free. Yeah, that's it. And like, yeah, all power to Qantas. Like, it's a good brand. It's a good business. And we need an Australian airline. Like, mm. think about it. All those international competitors that the government's trying to block, they're blocking them because they know Qantas won't be able to compete because those international brands are owned by their governments. So they're protecting Australia in the long term. So fair enough. But at the same time, give everyone's money back. Like, they made uh, over a billion dollars of profit, I think, from memory. So I'm just going off the top of my head. could be wrong. About uh, over a billion dollars. So... Um, and they receive government handouts. So taxpayers foot the bill for a bigger profit, give people back their money. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's my uh, macro update for this. <laughs> Owen has some strong feelings about Qantas. <laughs> no, I right. think, yeah, great brand. Just give people money back. <laughs> All right. Monique, have you been saving money, making money, spending money this month? Well, um, probably spending more again. Um yeah, I haven't really Spending saved more. much. I just so interest rates haven't spending. hit you yet. <laughs> no, Monique is very confident. I'm, I'm on a rampage, guys. I'm just like living my best life. <laughs> no, but I have been noticing like just like the simple things. Like I'll go to the supermarket and like I always need a stash of pasta in my pantry. Like it's my staple food. Yep. And I'll always have a stash because it's always like half price off at like Safeway or something like that. But lately for the past few months no specials on pasta and it's ridiculous. Really? I'm like, how am I supposed to eat my pasta? But um, instead, what I've been doing, so there's like this, um, I guess it's like an Italian wholesaler's close to my place. It's called um, 
Bass Foods, Bass if you're foods. in Brunswick. Um, and <laughs> they have like, it's better quality pasta, like it's made in Australia and everything. And it's kind of like fresh dried pasta, if that makes sense. And it costs the same as your your Coles brand or whatever. Really? Or Safeway brand, yeah. So is it that, when you say fresh, <laughs> it's like the one that you just put it in the hot water for like a minute and it's cooked? You yeah, know, soft yeah. soft type stuff? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So oh, it's God, like it tastes stuff. better and it's the same price as when the pasta's not on special. At Safe- I keep saying Safeway. It's Woolworths or Coles. <laughs> yeah. um, Safeway's definitely a throwback. Yeah. yeah it's just and only never for left. Victorians. It's never left my vocabulary and it's like it's just part of me. But anyway. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. And then apart from that, I've also stopped buying sweets. Tim Tams are so expensive. Have you really? seen the increase in price of Tim Tams? No, but I thought you'd be appalled about Big Macs going up. They're so expensive. Oh, I've, Unbelievable. I, I keep the deals. I got the app, you know. You got the yeah. My Mac is up. Yeah. <laughs> Not sponsored by McDonald's, but here you go. <laughs> but, yeah, like, so I've been, you know, buying my sugar, flour, butter, and making my own chocolate chip cookies. Mm. So that's been, like, cutting off a little bit on my grocery list as well. Like, cool. I know sweets aren't great for you, but... I need a little something at the end of the day. Yeah, and Monique right. has not brought any of these cookies no, into the office and to we've share. We've never had one of your pastas either. I need to bring some in. What's going on? Bring a buffet for you guys. Yeah. I've got to admit, those pastas that are soft are just mm. like the best in, thing in the world, aren't they? Yeah. You know the ones? Do you have this, Kate? Like, do you do you get it? As in, like, do you buy the the soft pasta or do you buy the hard one? I don't really <laughs> buy the pastas. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's 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 like gold, but they're normally super expensive. Yeah. So yeah. if you found a little place, if you're in Victoria, by the way, Safeway isn't a Victorian thing. <laughs> it used Woolworths used to be called Safeway in Victoria, for those of you that don't know. And Safeway is the name of the supermarket in Canada, which is just yeah, even more true. confusing. Yeah. So, uh, um, but it's Woolworths. So um, if you're in Victoria and you go around the northern side of Melbourne, the huge Italian communities around mm-hmm. there, lots of people that own their own stores and they have like, like around Thornbury, Brunswick, yeah. these types of areas, Coburg. Yeah. Even of- the coals in those areas, they have, yeah. like in the deli section, they'll have fresh pasta as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So good good tip. Shop local. Yep. Yeah. Like and it. I, I mean, if you want some quick and easy recipes to make, I am obsessed with Recipe Tin Eats. Recipe Tin Eats? Yeah. It's this woman called Naji. She's big on Instagram. She's got an amazing website. She publishes recipes that she creates herself every week. Um, yeah. Just... One of my friends told me about her. Great cookbook. Most of the recipes, not too complicated. They taste really good. They're very hard to stuff up. I haven't stuffed them up yet. And uh, they don't have too many ingredients, so they're very affordable. I was just going to ask them, like, how many ingredients? Because I stop at, like, not four many. or five ingredients. I made a really good pad <laughs> for you the other day, which only had six or seven ingredients. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. It's doable. And, but, well, I had to buy pad thai noodles because the supermarket yeah. didn't yeah. have pad you noodles, but they were quite affordable. Okay, cool. I would say they're cheaper than I'm pasta. Sucker for a pad you as well. Yeah, mm. it was. That's really the one with easy. the thick noodles, right? I yeah, so. I yeah. just I you didn't have it. Used thin noodles, but yeah. um, oh my, whatever works. Oh my, yeah. Some uh, I made it vegetarian, so some mushrooms and uh, <laughs> broccolini. Nice. I just Yum. kind of substituted ingredients because I couldn't find all of them. Look at you. You're just um, a little chef over yeah. here. Yeah. I know. It's just you've got to find something that works for you. And her website just seems to work for me and my cooking brain, I love nice. it. which is very I love new. It. What else have you saved money on, Kate? I have saved money on vegetables, going to farmer's markets. It yeah. seems to have come back. It's sort of really? hit and miss sometimes, but farmer's market on the weekend, two avocados for a dollar. That's really so affordable good. to get broccolis and cauliflowers, big bunches of kale, baby spinach, nice. um, carrots, all of that kind of stuff. It was a lot more affordable. I did notice the difference, farmer's market versus mm. supermarket. Question for you guys. Do you guys, and anyone that's listening to this that has the answer, please write into us or me and help me out. Does anyone know where to get really good organic vegetables online, like through like a subscription, like delivered to you? Does anyone know? There's quite a few of those subscription I don't know if they're boxes. organic, but you've mentioned it before, the one from Peran. Yeah, Pinots. Pinots, right, in Victoria. Okay. Yeah. If anyone is listening to this, there's surely someone has a really good experience with one of these. Please write into yeah, us. I think because there's one called heard, Farmer's Pick. I've heard different reviews, but anything that's like organic, like I'm happy to pay a little bit extra for really good veggies. Um, I just don't know where to go. So please, even if you run the business that does it, <laughs> no conflict of interest, just write yep. into us. Actually, I ed- edited the um, one of the business podcast episodes that is yet oh, to come out. Yeah. Um, it was the company 
Good and Fugly. Good and Fugly. F U G L Y. Yeah. Would yeah. they be organic? Yeah, I think they do a bit of organic, come to think of it. Yeah. So, Jordan and Daniel, for anyone that's listening, uh, over on the Australian business podcast that we run, uh, who they also come to our events, you can meet them. Um, they interviewed, yeah. Yeah, that What's was really good. It was a really good episode. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm yet, They rescue I'm yet to to rejected food. They say that in Australia, up to 25% of all produce doesn't leave the farm because mm. the cosmetic standards of supermarkets mean an outstanding mm. amount of great food never reaches our plate. So they give you the, the carrot with a kink in it or the yeah. apple that just has a little bump on it. Yeah, I remember when I used to work at the supermarket, we had to discard like all of that, like basically mm. discard it. Yeah. There's so, so much food that goes to waste. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, oh, cool. Cool. Anyone else yeah. got any um, savings, tips, hacks, money, whatever? I do have another one, which is dishwashing tablets. Mm-hmm. Firstly, they're very expensive. Oh, yes. Like buying the finished tablets. Uh, I just wrote down when I saw it at the supermarket yesterday, 19 tablets for around $20. And they've got a lot of bright colors in them. Wait, so if, what do you mean? Those finished dishwashing yeah. tablets, they cost... Yeah, they cost a bomb. Nineteen dollars for twenty. Yeah. Nineteen tablets for twenty dollars. Yeah. But there's this brand I've been trying for the last two months called Turtle T I R T Y L, mm-hmm. and they make more natural cleaning products. And their dishwashing tablets you can get fifty tablets for twenty four dollars. Free shipping if you just buy refills. They do heaps of more natural cleaning products and even stuff for washing. Yeah, washing, washing machine. Yep. And uh, yeah, they've been great. They do exactly the same job. Everything's cleaned off. You don't end up with a little bit of carrot stuck on a fork when you open it the next morning. And I've been really impressed. So cool. better for you because you're having less gunk go into your body mm. and much cheaper as well. And you're supporting a small Australian business. Yes, right. Oh, that's cool. I might start doing that. That sounds yeah. good. I've yeah. seen a few of these Australian businesses yeah. pop up and try and solve this. And they do a heap of better other than stuff. stuff going down the sink as well into yeah. the Like if you gutters. use a lot of hand wash, they you sell it in sort of tablet form and you mix mm. it up, leave oh, yeah. it, shake it with hot water for about five hours. Yeah, I've seen and them. It's, yeah. I haven't used any of their other products except the dishwashing tablets, but it, the reviews look great. And uh, mm. I think I'm going to keep trying yeah. once I use what I've already got up. Yeah, cool. Good yeah. for the planet. Good for the planet. Yeah. 4.8, um, that's the out of five stars of 1,700 reviews. That's pretty darn good. So good on them. Um, I don't really have that much, but I did do a bit of a subscription review this month, and I noticed how expensive some of the subscriptions all of a sudden are. Mm. I remember when Netflix was like $9 for like three screens and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Binge has gone up. It's like 25 bucks for the one that I have on Netflix now. I'm like, wow. I really? I got a- yeah. I got sharing the, plan. Or something. I got the sharing plan with the 4K TVs because mm. I've got it. Like when I go on the road, I have it on the iPad, but then you might log in. I've got two TVs in the house, and then you might log in on a device. So you kind of need that yeah. one. And there's no point having a 4K TV if you're watching yeah, <laughs> 1080p on the <laughs> screen, right? So um, that was super expensive. But I was amazed how expensive Stan is. I can't remember exactly, but it was so expensive. I think it, is it still ten dollars. I don't know. I, I, I was looking at them because I've got the whole, I've got the yeah. suite. Right? I look live price. I reckon because I have like five subscriptions, I know first world problems. 10 bucks for up. basic, but you might have oh, Stan okay. Sport add on, which is a $15 yeah, add on. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, I've just got the basic. Yeah, because premium's 21, so you must have. Yeah, the Champions League for soccer is on Stan Sport. Yeah, yeah so. Fair enough. So, yeah, that um, must be what you're up to. <laughs> but I was thinking about this like, okay, one or two of them going up, but when you have like three or four of them, mm. it all of a sudden has gone in a couple of years from like 80 or $90 to like 200 Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. And so um, just it takes, just take a moment to review them. We've already cut a few. Um, but when we first got KO, which is, does all the sport in Australia, just keep an eye out for that. You can sometimes get KO on a super low price. Uh, through your telco, whether it's Telstra or Optus. Mm. So have a look at those and uh, see if you can get a deal on them if you've got your subscriptions. But now's the time to review. And a lot of the banks are trying to offer more rewards and try and make things a bit more of a hub. So like I noticed in my CBA app recently, they were offering any customers using their card six months free Uber One subscription, which means you don't have to Mm. pay as much for delivery Mm. and you get more discounts and things like that. So Mm. just if it is something you're already using and spending money on, Find a provider that has some of those rewards. Like they're trying to entice you to use their banking app more through discounted movie tickets and things like that. I reckon one thing that we should bring onto the show in the future is the most silly thing we purchased this month. But but what I mean by silly is like the thing that we spent the most, spent an unusual amount of money on and we think, why did I do that? I'm just going to give you one example. At the airport, 
I was staring at this egg and bacon roll in the window. I'm like, doesn't look that good. And it was $16. What? <laughs> like, it was like a wrap. It was horrible. I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I did it anyway. Like, my rational brain was like, Owen, just go get a banana or something. Like, what are you doing? Got it. It was horrible. $16. And oh, my no. lesson is just plan ahead. Oh, no. Get something on the way into the airport before you become a trapped audience. <laughs> anyway, um, that was my silly little thing. But um, behind the scenes, obviously, we've got the events. So... We've got four events left. Check them out. Uh, if you use the coupon code FRIENDS, so FRIENDS plural, um, you get 33% off. So you get three for two or you get six for four. We'll bring put your, links in the yeah, show notes. Put links in the show notes. Uh, you can use the coupon code FRIEND as well if you just want to bring a singular friend. Um, and you get like 20 bucks off or something like that off the second ticket. Uh, but the big thing, the biggest thing, and it's stacked up right here in the middle of the table for anyone <laughs> that's watching behind me, um, you can see it right here. Buying happiness, Kate. Ooh, Tell us more. You probably held it up the wrong way. No, no, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, buying go. happiness. The book. Learn to invest. Your time and money better. Your time and money better. It is out in four days, the 12th of <gasps> September. So if you're super keen this weekend, you can pre-order on mm-hmm. Amazon, Booktopia, your local Dimmix or bookstore. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it'll be out officially on the 12th of September, which is in four days' time. And uh, hopefully, you can buy it in person if you want to. Yeah, buy cool. it and share it with a friend. So the book is available anywhere, basically online, wherever you get your books. Uh, there is a link in the show notes. You can click that. Um, takes you to Booktopia or Amazon pre-order uh, and get it delivered. Yeah, and it's a bit of everything that we've covered on the podcast over the years and some really actionable ways that have researched back to add some happiness to your life, Mm -hmm. different ways that our community have done that, how to have money conversations, get Mm. over analysis paralysis and finally pick a brokerage account, all of that important stuff. So there's a bit of everything in there. Yeah, cool. Um, Pre-order, get it now. Um, If you're listening to this a couple of days after publishing, you can get it uh, delivered immediately. Uh, I'm super happy for you, Kate. And anyone that listens to the podcast, you haven't you know, support Kate in any way. This is a great way to do it. Support um, everyone else around you to buy a copy for a friend or a family member. Um, I'll just give you one update from behind the scenes real quick. Uh, You can head to rasmedia.com.au. That's where we keep all of the show notes. So if you ever click a link in the show notes, that's where it goes, raskmedia.com.au. And we publish heaps of our podcast resources, educational resources there. But something that we launched this month or the month just gone, in the last month, I should say, um, is that we now invite all of Australia's best fund managers and investors on the platform to contribute their research. So they do that for free in the hope that you will read it and you will see their brand and whatever. Uh, And so you can go on there every single day and you'll see articles from the likes of Magellan, from the likes of Marcus Today. We write our own articles, um, Seneca, uh, Drew, Meredith from Model Partners, like all of these people that you know and love and all the brands and investing brands, ETF providers like BetaShares and Globlex, all of those are on there. So um, you can go and you can stay informed with your investing. Finally, guys, as we wrap up today's Money and Chill, anyone got anything really quick to share with our audience, something you've read, something you've listened to, something that you found interesting over the month? Anyone? Monique, you got anything? Well, I was actually, and I, I didn't save mine till last, but I was going to mention The Good and Fugly uh, because okay, cool. I had just edited it. But I just found um, the story super interesting of like how to create a small online business. And um, I think it's only been running for like three years and it seems to be going really well. So it was just nice to hear from the owner yeah. of the business. Um yeah, cool. Just to hear the story behind the scenes and how it's all going. So, so that's... if you're not subscribed to the Australian Business Podcast, make sure you do so you get this episode when it's dropped. Yeah, link, you, link will be available in the show notes, Australian Business Podcast. Check it out. It's heaps of fun. Kate, what about you? I have been reading a book called The Blue Zones of Happiness. I think this is a really actionable Blue book. Um, if you want to boost your happiness, if you want to read something and you get inspired after reading my book, Buying Happiness, I'd highly recommend that one. And I'll probably just leave you with one tip that I found in the research and I've included in Buying Happiness is if you can add some anticipation to a future purchase or experience, that's likely to give you an extra happiness boost. So, for example, a month ago I booked... And I didn't tell Owen off air because I was trying to get him to guess what I booked for Friday night. But I have booked 
to go to a cheese fondue mm. place. Oh, you did mention yes. that you wanted to do this. Yes. Yeah. And now I've had a whole month to think about cheese oh. fondue and seeing my favourite group perform in prom tunes. So that's Love really it. exciting. Oh, cool. Anticipation. Yes. If you drool, it tastes better. Yeah. I like this. You get to think about the event in the lead up. So booking or planning for a purchase. If you give it lead time, that adds to your happiness. You get to enjoy the event. Hopefully it goes well, mm. fingers crossed. And then you also get to talk about that experience with other people afterwards, which also gives you a happiness boost. So give that a go this mm. week. Think of something that you can book a In month advance. out and yeah. or a purchase you can save up for over the next month and see if that makes a difference. You know what I love doing is I just love imagining my coffee the next day. I'm a big coffee guy. You guys know this. We all kind of are. But um, where I'm going to have the coffee tomorrow morning, like if it's at home or if it's at the cafe, I just imagine myself doing that. And when I get there, I appreciate it more. Mm. It's just such a little thing. And I just, I've just i been doing that for a little while. That's why those gratitude rituals that you talk mm. about um, are so good. Okay, one quick one from me. Um, let's do a shout out, especially again to the Rule Breaker Investing Podcast in the United States run by David Gardner, one of the co-founders of The Motley Fool. They've only been running podcasts only for like eight to 10 years. But before that, they ran the first, I think it was like community or national radio show on investing in the United States. And so they, back in the day, got to interview because they were the only ones doing it. They got to interview like Reed Hastings, Jeff Bezos, all of these people before like people did this. <laughs> and um, amazing guests. But what they do now is they do what they call a blast from the radio past episode where they go back in time and they review the discussions that they had from 20 <laughs> years ago. Cool. And they reviewed the discussion that they had with the Costco um, founder. I can't remember his name, but what they did, and I'll put a link in the show notes to this episode, is they review like what they said at the time and how kind of crazy it was, like the CEO of Blockbuster. Um, and then obviously Blockbuster <laughs> got uh, usurped by Netflix. But what they did with this Costco guy is they told the story of why Costco probably is the way it is, Costco being the big supermarket. The guy who started Costco was actually, I think he was adopted out because his mother couldn't afford to keep him. And then when he was older, he went back to that family when she had money again. And he still has like different, he had like his parents who were his actual adopted parents. So he still called them parents, but he had his biological mom as well. And they talk about in the podcast about how they think that that part of his life then led him to start Costco where the only focus is on the customer to lower the prices to the lowest possible level to support people. And that's what enabled the business to survive. And it's crazy how to think about that, um, how someone's journey through life shaped that entire business and industry. So I thought that was a really cool, cool podcast. It's Rule Breaker Investing Podcast, Blast from the Radio Past. Check it out. There'll be a link in the show notes. Ladies, heaps of fun, buying happiness. Out in four out days. Out in four days. Oh, my God. Or if you're listening to this in four days' time after it goes live, it is out now. Get a copy there. It links in the show notes. Uh, we'd love to see you on the road in Sydney, Newcastle, wherever you are. Heaps of fun. Monique, thanks for joining us. Anytime. And Kate, as always, pleasure. Thanks for listening, everyone.